Hey Grokites, today we're gonna grok cell phones. I basically have my cell phone with me all the time, except on Shabbat when it and I take a rest. But other than those 25 hours a week, my phone is with me all the time for distraction, for entertainment, and for work. It holds my emails, my text messages, the internet, and countless apps that are very important to me, such as the one where I can see what I would look like as a man, as an old person, and as a bank robber, which is very important. And yes, me as a man looks like my brother. It's estimated that we use our phones an average of 80 times a day. So if you're awake from like 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., that's about five times an hour. But if you're anything like me, you might look at your phone maybe 20 times an hour, which is about once every five minutes. That sounds about right. One writer said the following thing about smartphones. Imagine combining a mailbox, a newspaper, a TV, a radio, a photo album, a public library, and a boisterous, exciting party attended by every single person you know, and then compiling it into a small, perfect, tiny object. Yes, that's exactly what it's like. But what actually happens to our brains on smartphones? Here are the three things you should know. Number one, convenience plus distraction equals phone madness. The simple fact that our phones exist means that distractibility is literally a constant heartbeat away. This draws our attention away from things in ways that we may not even fully comprehend. For example, one scientific study showed that people messed up on cognitive tasks the closer their cell phones were to them, even if they didn't consciously think they were being distracted by them. The subjects who had their phones closest to them did the worst on these cognitive tasks, and the people who did the best had their cell phones in another room. In another study, subjects whose phones kept giving them alerts but weren't allowed to check them had increased blood pressure and all of these other weird physiological measures that indicated anxiety. The take home message is, there is such a thing as the unconscious and it knows where your phone is. Number two, cell phones aren't people. Hmm, are we sure about that? Kind of feels like they're people. They're not people. I have noticed that a lot of the time, my mind totally feels like it's elsewhere even when I'm spending time with people that I love. A lot of the reason is that I'm constantly being pulled away to check messages and pictures and social media accounts of people that I'm not even in the same room with. I can see that many of my relationships have started to suffer because of my persistent obsession with looking at people and places and things on my phone that I can't even control. My kids have pointed out that my phone use has increased. I've started using my phone at the dinner table and they have to remind me to turn it off. The thought that external forces can be negatively impacting my relationships is really freaking me out. The take home message has to be, people in your life in person have to be more interesting than the people on our phones. Number three, the Google effect. Even though having a phone feels like you have all of this information constantly accessible to you right at your fingertips, sociologists are actually finding that thinking that information is constantly available to you actually makes you less likely to consciously remember information. This is called the Google effect, and the basic premise is the more you think that you can Google information, the less your brain has to work towards internally encoding it as part of your knowledge. So if you wanna look up what year the Spanish Civil War was, knowing that you can Google it is a totally different brain process than knowing that you need to look that information up and have it as part of your brain because you can't rely on the fact that it's always gonna be Googleable. We're living in a generation of people who feel like they know more than any generation before, when in fact, we may actually be living in a generation where people know less than they ever did before. A great example of this is when I meet people who grew up in the age of cell phones and they can't navigate anywhere without their phone telling them where to go. For those of us who grew up with maps and needing to remember where we went without looking it up on a phone, our hippocampus had to work really hard to remember that information. People who grow up with phones and a disembodied voice telling them where to go are not encoding that information into the region of the brain responsible for mapping the world. Take home message, you still need to learn things and retain them. You're not a robot. I don't mean to sound like a big anti-cell phone meanie, like put away your phone. Why are you looking at your phone? Go outside and play, put that phone down. But I do think it's time to take a good hard look at the way our lives have changed because of phones. We also need to assess whether or not we need to make some shifts. I know that I do. 
since trying to make these shifts, my kids have noticed that I'm on my phone less. And I wanna start doing more things, like leaving my phone at home when otherwise I'd have it in my pocket. I wanna go to restaurants and not feel like I'm constantly gonna be pulled away from whatever on my phone. I wanna be present with the people that I am with and spend time with them in meaningful ways. I am not perfect at this, and it's gonna be a struggle for all of us to try and maintain brain sanity in a world of phone insanity. I continue to love my phone for the places that it can take me, both literally and figuratively. But I also don't want to lose sight of where I came from and where it is that I want to go. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. How has your relationship with your phone changed your relationships with people? Let us know. See you next time. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.